Team Black Sheep, or what is better known as TBS, are a brand that is inextricably linked to FPV. That is partly due to Trappy himself. However, they are a brand that appeared at the very start of the explosion of FPV. Many of us who've been around for a long time have used their products. And in fact, my first long range FPV quad was a TBS Discovery. And over the years, I have used many of their products, including the likes of the Mambo or Crossfire. Now, over the last few years, there's been a lot of question marks around what's going on with TBS. And especially in the last few months, there's been a few warning signs. For instance, there's been no real development on any of their products. Promise updates haven't been delivered. There's been no stock available for their existing product lines. And we've also seen no real new development from them either. Now, this has obviously led to a lot of speculation. And whilst we've had tip bits of information released on the TBS lounges from Trappy, this week they did a live stream called A Trip Down Memory Lane, where Trappy went into a lot more detail about what has actually been going on, the troubles and difficulties that he and TBS have faced over the last few months. Now, in this video, I'm not really going to touch on the ins and outs of the whole story. Obviously, if you're interested in seeing it and understanding the depth of what's happened, I would strongly suggest going and checking out the link to their live stream. I'll put a link to it in the description. But the basic reality is, over the last few years, they've been struggling with some internal politics from ownership. That then led into COVID. They then had to move premises. And then there was a real implosion with regards to the business ownership until what we have today is the fact that Trappy is now the full owner of TBS and he is the person going to be carrying it forward from now on. What's really interesting in what Trappy says is TBS really did come to the brink of no longer existing. With everything that was going on, it seemed to get to the point where there was almost no possible way forward and TBS would have ceased to exist. Now there is a whole host of in and outs as I've said of what's gone on here but with Trappy now at the helm he's already said they've done more development since he's taken ownership than they've done in the last few years. They've got new products in the pipeline and whilst I'm not going to sit here and say everything they've ever promised in the past is going to happen, what I'm hopeful of is seeing TBS retain and move back into the position they were in in the past and rise back to the very top of the FPV brands. Now, there is no question that there's a lot of people who feel slightly burnt by TBS at the moment, whether that be those who have been waiting for Edge TX on the Mambo, those who've been wanting new features or capabilities or just bugs being fixed on the likes of Tracer or Crossfire. However, when you understand what's been going on with regards to the issues in the background, also the amount of staff changes they've been, it really is somewhat understandable. And in the end, what we have to be thankful of is TBS is still here today and hopefully they're going to be able to get back to that prominent position they were in in the past. Now, I think this is fantastic in the sense of TBS, whilst a brand that has come under a huge amount of pressure in recent years from the likes of Express LRS and others on their RC control links, they are a brand that many of us love to have in FPV. And actually, they are, in my opinion, one of the most important brands in FPV as well. And there is no one more than me happier to know that TBS isn't going anywhere. And hopefully, they're going to be getting themselves back on track moving forward. Now, as I mentioned already, there's no question TBS is facing a huge amount of pressure in some of their core business areas in remote controllers and the likes of RC Control Links with Express LRS, Radio Master and others delivering heavily improved products over the last few years, good quality. And the fact that Express LRS is open source, we've seen it explode with all of the manufacturers integrating that into their systems. Be under no illusion though, Crossfire is not dead. And in fact, pretty much all of the main bind and fly manufacturers today still offer Crossfire as an option on their quads. And whilst TBS may have lost ground, they are certainly not out of the game. And Crossfire still remains today one of the best long-range RC control links available on the market. 
Now, with regards to Tracer, things are a bit more mixed. The product, in my opinion, really hasn't taken market holding. I would personally bury it, and if I was TBS, I'd actually start making 2.4 gig Express LRS hardware and try to put out something interesting with the likes of Crossfire and Express LRS for ultra long range links. And I'm really looking forward to also seeing what they may be doing in the video space. Today, TBS heavily remains in analog. However, there are companies out there who would be willing to work with them, the likes of HD Zero, or could we even see something from the likes of Cadex with Avatar HD? Or really, could they bring analog FPV back to the top of the pile with something new? Remember, there are still lots of technologies out there for HD on analog, and whilst we've seen no one really run with that yet, TBS are a brand who are known to push the limits. Now, one of the first things I would do if I was TBS is make a Crossfire version of the Mambo. This is actually a very good radio, and whilst it isn't perfect for me the biggest letdown on it has actually been the built-in radio system which is tracer i think they should have all of their radios available in all of their rf systems so tracer or crossfire and as i've already said personally i'd be putting tracer into the dust now, I'm really excited about what TBS are going to deliver in the future. And for me, this is really very much a situation of a new TBS 2.0. And I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. What I would say, though, as a content creator is I'd actually like to see TBS talk to the creator community a bit more. They're not a brand that does a lot with the likes of review channels. They do work with some. However, they're not a brand I've ever particularly worked with. And I think they do need to get out there more and talk to the wider community and not just rely on their existing community that they have in their live streams. Whilst they do absolutely have a really good following, they also need to branch out to the wider world. And I think it would be good to see TBS do that with many of the creators that have come up over the last few years as well. Get that brand out there, get people talking about it so people know it is still important. Now, as I've said, if you want to know more, the link to the live stream is in the description. Now, I hope you think this is good news like I do. I'm interested in hearing what you think. Please do put your thoughts in the comment section. If there's any questions, I will try and put them in there as well. Furthermore, if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to do this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.